All right, let's talk about all the size in Signum when triggering a trading bot. You can see there are two options, 100% and let strategy decide. Most people are using 100% because the easiest one and most trading strategies in TradingView are also using 100%, going in 100%, going out 100%. That is why the order size is hard-coded here to 100%. Side note to any developers watching this, of course, you can send any percentage number here. If you want to construct this JSON yourself, you can go in with however many percent you like by coding it into your Pine script. But that is a different topic. Now, let strategy decide, as you can see, replaces those 100% with a placeholder that TradingView will then replace with the actual amount to buy and sell. And that is very practical when you want to do easing in, easing out or pyramiding strategies. We're going to look exactly what 100% order sizes do and what are the pros and cons and as well what these custom order sizes or let strategy decide order sizes do and again, what are the pros and cons. Now, let's look at the 100% order size and how it looks like when TradingView is triggering it. Over in TradingView, you can see that this has triggered with an order size of 100%. And by the way, I am here on the alerts tab in the logs because the logs are the only place in TradingView where you can see which alerts it has actually already triggered and with which parameters. And you can see here it triggered a sell signal for 100% to get to position size zero. Position size zero is very important because that means you want to go flat. And Signum understands that and will make sure to sell everything or to close a position if you're using futures. If position size is above zero, it means you want to go long for those amount of contracts. And if it's below zero, it means you want to go short for those amounts of contracts. But when using percentages, the position size number itself doesn't really matter that much. Just zero matters a lot. But if it's above zero, it's whatever money you have on the exchange, right? Because it's 100%. So we'll go to the exchange and it will buy for 100%. And it will go to the exchange and also sell 100%. So it only matters if it's a positive number, a zero number or a negative number, right? So the way it looks like here in the diagram when you're using the 100% order size is that TradingView will send a signal with 100% order size. In my diagram here, it's a buy signal, it's fine. Right, so you see multiple examples of this, and the position size is some number above zero, it means this will go long, right? And so, trading view will get this, it will understand all of this, it will go to your exchange, it will check how much money you have, right? Because 100% is a relative term, so it needs to know how much funds you have, and then it will send another signal to actually trigger the trade. Okay, so the first one will be fetch your balance, right? And the second one will be actually execute the trade, okay? So that's how it works for 100% order size. It's very simple and you can follow any strategy that doesn't do any pyramiding whatsoever and it will work perfectly fine. Now, the benefits of this is that it's very easy to set up, right? You don't need to synchronize how many funds you have with TradingView. You will see what I mean with this later on when we talk about the other option. You can follow any strategy, right? Because you don't need to change the code or any of that and also it has these compounding effects, right? Because it uses 100%, it can reinvest every time it has another long signal, right? Or short signal, whichever strategy you're using and reinvest all the profits again and again and again. And that means that you are benefiting from the compounding effects of your strategy. The downside is that it does not support pyramiding as you already know. It means that let's say your strategy wants to ease in and ease out multiple times, right? Let's say it wants to buy here, it wants to buy here, and it wants to buy here. Now, the problem is that the first signal will already be for 100%. So whenever the next buy signals are coming, they will not have any funds left on the exchange because all the funds have already been invested with the 100% order that came the first time, right? And the same thing will be with the sell signal. When a sell signal comes, it will sell 100%. And then if there are more sell signals later on to ease out, they won't have any funds left. And so in Signum, you will see an error message saying that you don't have enough funds to execute that trade. It's not really an error, but we make it an error to make it look like you have to check it, but most likely it's fine. But if you want this to happen in steps, right? In easing in, easing out steps, basically pyramiding, then you cannot use the 100% order size feature. Instead, you have to use the 
let's strategy decide feature now let's talk about that in more detail when using the strategy decide feature remember that the order size is defined by your trading view strategy there is this placeholder and trading view will replace it whenever there is a trading alert now this trading alert for example is for a sell signal but you see the order size is a specific number we call it absolute number it's not a relative percentage value right you see it's 0 0.00 096 okay and position size zero it means again it wants to go flat it wants to sell exactly that amount okay but this can be used for a lot of use cases like easing in easing out right so that is why this feature exists now how does this work right so whenever trading you sends this signal to signum then and let me clean this up a little bit here it will say i want to do this action with this amount and at the end i want to be in this position so i want to be long 2.8 basically it means that before it was flat and now it wants to go long now let's see how this allows for building up a position and also decreasing a position basically easing in and easing out so this position has been created great but if i want to increase that position by one more contract then i can simply send another buy signal with order size of one to increase my overall position to now 3.81603. And I can do this over and over again until I'm happy with the position size I have, right? I can also do this with sell signals and decrease the position again until I go to position size zero where I'm flat or I go to position size negative, which is short. And TradingView will trigger this fully automatically if your strategy is doing all of these operations then Signum understands and can do the same thing, right? Okay, cool stuff. Now what Signum does not have to do, it does not have to check your balance, right? Because it doesn't care. It, there is no percentage value to check. So it will just send an order for this amount and that's it, right? In this case, for going long, okay? So it will get this signal and it will just execute it on your exchange exactly how it arrives. Now you have an issue now because if you don't have this money right to buy this amount of in this case bitcoin it will get an error and you will see that in your logs right so now comes the good and bad about this option right so the good is that you have the support for pyramiding for easing in and out and you can basically execute what i told you before where you can buy multiple times and build up a position over time. You can then sell multiple times and ease out of that position. That will work perfectly fine. But you need to synchronize the amount of money that the strategy thinks it has with how much you really have on your exchange, right? Because if you don't do that, you will get into this error that I told you before, right? So you need to now synchronize the dollar amount here and here, okay? And obviously, you won't change the amount that you have on the exchange. Instead, you have to tell TradingView, hey, listen, this is the amount of money you have available to actually trade with. Okay, so do not send huge order sizes because this 2.81603, this would be, if I look in the list of trades, this will basically trigger at this price of Bitcoin, it will trigger an order for $263,000, right? I mean, nice, but it will not go through on the exchange if you don't have that money, right? So how do you make this happen, right? So you need to set up in a bit more complex way. It's not so complex once you know how it works, but that is the real downside of this, right? So you cannot simply set up the trading alert without synchronizing the funds, right? You have to do that, right? And so if you, let's say, have 1,000 bucks on your exchange, okay, and you want to tell TradingView, hey, listen, you have to trade with 1,000 bucks, like there is not more money, and the price of the asset is this, then you can actually only execute an order for this amount of Bitcoin, right? So it's 0 0.0107 something, all right? Now, if I go here and I go on the daily chart, right? And I basically, I look at the strategy tester and I want to execute this strategy with the money I have, then I will run into the issue that it will execute for way too much money, right? Okay, cool. I can go to the settings and I can go to the initial capital. And now I can play around with this until i arrive at a quantity that i can actually afford okay you can see this is still too much right and i played with this before and i think it's 37 bucks in the initial starting point of the strategy and i have 0 0.0103 it's very close okay so i can take this 
I can say, okay, now the strategy is set up in a way that at this point in time, it has the money that I have as well, and I can start automating now, okay? Now, this is nice, it works, but it's a little bit cumbersome. And by the way, what I just did, just to make sure you understand, I told the strategy to start trading whenever it starts trading, right? Depends on the strategy with just a little amount of money so that today it has the money I have on the exchange to synchronize those two, right? So here, as you have seen, I have just simply divided the amount of money I have by the price of the asset, right? So that I can figure out how many contracts, right? How many assets I can buy. Now, this is one option to do it, okay? So you can mess around with the initial capital until it matches your money that you have on the exchange. And when I say it matches, I mean the latest trade in the list of trades has to result in the amount of dollars you have. Why dollars? Because I'm on a dollar chart right now. Most of you will be on some kind of dollar chart anyway, right? Because the dollar chart is still the best one with the most volume and so on, but that's a different topic for a different video. And if you have different type of assets on your exchange, then simply do currency conversion and calculate from the dollar to whichever currency you have on your exchange to not have a too large order size. And that is why I show it like this in the diagram, right? You multiply the value of the asset with the amount purchased in the last trade, and this has to result in money that you actually have, okay? So this is synchronizing between your exchange money and your trading view strategy money, right? Okay, so having said that, this works, but there is a cooler way to do it, especially if you have a strategy that has a start date feature, because if you have that, it makes it way easier, okay? You can go here and you can say, look, in the inputs, I just put the current date of today, right? And I pretend that there was no trade yet whatsoever, and I will put exactly the time of now. So this is 1520 when I'm recording this video and there is no trade, right? And now what I can do is I can just put thousand bucks. Okay, I'll put a bit less because I wanna account for trading fees and stuff like that and fluctuations in the price. So I will put a little bit less so I never run into this issue of not having enough funds. I click okay and now I can go and create these alerts. Okay, right now while I'm recording, TradingView has some maintenance mode, but you get the idea. Now the next trade will use exactly these funds, right? Because there was no trade before, so it's perfect. So this is the way to get started with the let strategy decide signal. I can already hear you say, yeah, but what if I don't have the start and end date feature in my strategy? How can I add it? Well, if you have access to the code, it is actually very easy to add it because I have created this prompt for you, yeah. which you will get access. The link is down below in this video description. You can just take this prompt, replace this code here with the code of your strategy, all right? Put it there and then copy the whole thing and give it to an AI. I gave it to ChatGPT03. I put the whole prompt in there, including the code of my strategy. And after 17 seconds, it gave me a new version of the strategy with the same trading logic, but now it added these inputs to the code and then it used the time condition here in the ifs so that it doesn't just trade when the trading signal comes, but also when it is in the time window that I'm looking for. Perfect. You don't have to use ChatGPT 03. You can also use DeepSeek, which is free. You can use Gemini. You can use Claude. Just go bananas. I just want to make sure you know how to do this. This is the prompt that you need for that. You will have these fields as well, and you can do this method because I think this method is the best one to start the strategy with the date and time of now, and then you will be fine. Okay, so remember that there should be no trade whatsoever, and you are setting the initial capital to what you have right now, minus five to 10% just to account for trading fees. Okay, so this is how it works to set up the let strategy decide feature. It's a bit more work, but it gives you more flexibility, right? It's way more granular. And if you are a bit more professional and you're creating strategies that need pyramiding, easing in, easing out, you want to have full control over what's happening when you're setting the order size, then this is the way to do it. And finally, I want to speak to developers that are still watching this video. If you want to send a very customized version of this JSON, for example, by setting the order size percentages yourself, then you need to construct that whole JSON here in your code, right? And then you basically take that 
and you send it through an alert message, right, into the alert. So here in code, you construct the whole JSON, right, where you put the variable that you want to have, right, for order size, for example, and then you're sending it with the message whenever you are triggering a trade, right? So strategy entry will trigger all of this, but it will also trigger a specific alert message. Now, you need to put that as well into every trading signal that you're generating, right? Not just in the long entry, but also in the short, in everything that you're doing, right? And also when you're using strategy of exit everywhere, right? Where you have this variable, you put this JSON, right? That you have created. Now, once you have that and you create the alert, instead of putting the whole message that we give you here, because you have already constructed that yourself in your own code, instead of that, you're simply putting the alert message like this, right? And so from your code, it will construct the alert message. The alert message will be that whole JSON, right? And it will be sent to Signum with the webhook. And that means that you have done basically what you wanted, which is constructing this yourself, putting everything custom the way you need it. And then you can even ease in and out with percentages. So now you know everything there is to know when it comes to order sizes with Signal. And you can automate any trading strategy the way you like, and you know exactly the pros and cons of everything. So if you have more questions, then make sure to come to the Telegram support group. The link is down below. And with all of that in mind, we wish you happy automating.